The first thing you need to find your best path for the great storm is how to plan ahead for chests in the inner ring. If you see such a constellation, be careful. The chest can be on any nearby field, including the one in the inner ring. A few moves later, I was pleased to discover that the chest was not on the inner ring. Later though I came to a similar constellation in which it turned out that the chest is on the inner ring. The team's buff is usually too strong for you to take at this stage of your journey through the great storm. So I usually complete the outer circle to a point where I have enough storm resistance. For my team, this is a storm resistance of 215. So for this run I will likely end up somewhere here. At 215 resistance I will go for the boss and then finish the chest in the outer circle. Be careful when you are in this region. Sometimes there is a chest at this spot. The problem with this spot is that after you move there from tile 50 then the only tile left for you to move in order to get back to the outer circle is the buff tile 54 which I usually try to avoid since it's not that useful. To avoid this, I usually conquer these two tiles, which allow me to recognize in time whether there is a chest on tile 51 or not. To avoid wasting moves, you also need to know how to fight the most dangerous enemies on the map. The dangerous enemy is this skeleton dragon. It can deal quite some damage, which is the reason why I play in manual mode and keep Celeste in her healing form. Also, I use the escape key to slow down the battle, which greatly helps to manage the manual play. You may want to watch my previous video about Celeste if you need to know more about this. It's linked in the description. The next dangerous enemy is at tile 25. It is this blue three-headed wolf. I recommend using Sebastian against the wolf's debuff, which otherwise freezes your frontline heroes and silences all your heroes. Yasmin is very useful because she can attack the wolf early during the fight. You may want to watch my video about Yasmin to learn how to attack the target of your choice in manual mode. It's also linked in the description. After Yasmin finishes the three-headed wolf, the fight is quite easy. The blue ice faces in the next tiles are also dangerous. Here too, I recommend using Yasmin to kill them quickly. Next are the Lady Minstrels who charm your frontline heroes. To counter this, it's best to bring Sebastian again. Please slow down the movie if you want to watch the fight. The packs from Tile 35 onwards are also dangerous. Here too, I recommend taking Yasmin and Sebastian with you. Sebastian helps to prevent the energy drain from the mechanical balls. And Yasmin can quickly kill the mechanical balls or the healer in the back which otherwise can heal a lot of damage. You also need to know that the giant at the front will be revived if you can't kill him fast enough after he collapses. This is exactly what happened in my fight. There is one more enemy type you need to know. These mechanical objects spawn endless spheres if you do not kill them quick enough. Luckily, Aurora's AoE is so huge nowadays that for me they are no issue. If you use another tank or your Aurora does not have the ascension skills, you might want to kill these enemies quickly using Yasmin or bring good AoE damage to kill the spheres. Now you know all the dangerous enemies from the outer circle. I haven't fought the boss in the current event, so I will include the boss fight of Last Great Storm. I believe this time it will be easier for me because of Aurora's new ascension skills. Last time, the pure damage from Heidi and Iris along with the AoE healing from Martha and Celeste, switching between healing and damage form as needed, helped me a lot. With this I want to thank the members of White Room for their ongoing support. If you found this video helpful please check out my playlist. It is filled with useful secrets I learned in three years of playing. Thanks for watching and good luck in Dominion.